Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday morning. My name is Dorla Aparicio, and I love to come here every Wednesday morning. Well, not every Wednesday morning, but most Wednesday mornings, and talk to a group piano teacher. And this morning, we have Michelle Miller. Um, I met Michelle right here in our group. And Michelle, I think you were one of my first uh, Piano Pyramid members. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been what, two years, three years? I don't even remember. But please, yeah. please introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Darla. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm Michelle Miller. I am from Canada. I live in Northern Alberta. In, in the city of Edmonton, Alberta, and I teach um, mainly group piano um, here in my studio, um, both in person, but also I teach group online, and and then I have a few, just a few private students, but mostly I do group piano. Wonderful. I'd love to know, and I try to ask this, to remember to ask all the teachers, what got you started? with group piano? Well, ironically, this is not, 26 years ago, this is not where I saw myself at all. Um, I had done a music degree in university, um, so you would think I would have been, you know, getting ready to teach piano, but all throughout university, <clears throat> I wanted to focus on performance and playing the piano, and everyone said, oh, you should be a teacher, you should be a teacher, and, and I thought, oh, I don't know. I don't know if a piano teacher is the career that I'm going for, I, but I also had no idea what career I was going for. So in university, I, I needed more credits, so I took music education. Um, I even took church musician leading, and when I graduated, um, I don't know why my husband married me, because I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And so um, we moved to a new town. I, I really had no connections musically. So I ended up as a bank teller, <laughs> and, uh, oh. and it, didn't take me, uh, it didn't take me very long before I knew I didn't want to be a bank teller until I retired. So I started um, kind of connecting and looking um, at, at job fairs and different opportunities, and and uh, I was at an interview um, uh, for working with special needs children and adults when I was just chatting with someone about my background, and they said, oh you should apply at McEwen University. They have a conservatory there and they teach, uh, or they offer this early childhood music program. Mm -hmm. You should apply there. And I thought, oh my goodness, here's someone else telling me to teach music again. <laughs> but I thought, well, I, don't, I know what I don't wanna do, so I might as well give this a try. So I applied and I got the job. And that was group teaching right there. It wasn't piano teaching, but I was teaching, um, and groups of children, um, I would have, um, they were all divided by age. So I would have a group of four-year-olds, a group of five-year-olds, a group of six-year-olds, or, or se several. And I had 12 in each group. So I suddenly got thrown in to um, teaching students the foundations of music. Uh -huh. um, the, the, the university was so awesome. They, they kind of gave me, okay, here's, here's your, what you need to accomplish with them in a year. Um, these are, you know, these are all of the concepts we want them to learn, but you can do it however you want. Um, oh. And so we did solfege, we did, you know, rhythm instruments. Um, we did uh, even some ORF instruments. Um, we learned, you know, all the foundational bits of music, like about dynamics and um, and singing. And we even began uh, to do some note reading um, in the group. Oh. So it, it was such a it, it was a wonderful place to start because um, there were other teachers teaching the program. I could go in, look at their classes, see what they were doing. Um, say, oh, I like that, you know, I get some ideas from them. So it, it was like being mentored, but then I also had this incredible freedom just to kind of make the program my own. And so I thought, okay, well, this is good. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach these music classes. And, um, and I was really, I was really happy when I had my first day. Um, I came home and my husband said, how was it? And I'm like, 
I'm supposed to be a music teacher. This is what I'm supposed to do. People were right. And uh, I said, I had the best day ever. And, and so I had a great time. And so this program started with age four and then each year built upon it until age six, which was kind of the graduation year. So after I taught a couple of years, parents started saying, well, what's next? Yeah. Like, we know that you play the piano. We know that you studied it in university. Can we have piano lessons? Wow. And so I was like, sure. And so before I know it, knew it, I had a couple dozen piano students and, okay. and I was teaching these classes. And uh, were, you and te- it, were you teaching them in group? No. See, that was kind of the funny thing. Here I started out in group and I didn't even connect it to piano. I thought, okay, well, yes, we'll go into private lessons now. You had this like foundational group, you know, music. And uh, But then when I got up, you know, I was in the 20s or, you know, had a couple dozen students, I realized um, I can't take any more on. I'm full. And people were still, you know, asking, can, you know, can you be our piano teacher? And I thought, well, where am I going to find the time? And that's when it hit me. Like, well, why don't I teach piano in groups too? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can do this. I know how to do this. And so, yeah. And so then um, I had, I did start that. I kind of, I kind of started do introducing them to groups um, with um, master classes because I had been teaching, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, Monday to Thursday, and then I had this problem where these holiday Mondays, um, mm-hmm. students went, didn't want to come to lesson. I didn't really want to teach. I wanted a holiday too, but then I had to try and charge them less, or there mm-hmm. was this whole they weren't getting as many lessons. And so it was at a workshop with Melody Bober that she talked about doing these kind of quarterly group lessons with her students where she canceled regular lessons for the week and they did a group lessons and they did games and they did, you know, like these theory games and, and uh, um, they had sort of little performance opportunities and I thought, oh, I should do that. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of the first introduction to groups with my piano students and kind of got them in the door. and. Um, I was amazed at how it built community among them. Like they all got to know that they'd start asking when's the next group lesson, that they were excited about it. Um, it made recitals really fun because everybody kind of knew each other. So is this what you call master class? Yes. And so uh-huh. I do still do those to this day. And okay. uh, so it's a, it's a different, it's a different kind of group. It gives them a, a performance opportunity usually. And then I usually just, I find, all kinds of things that we can do um, in the class that we we don't always have time for in our regular lessons. So, so how is your master class different from your group le- lessons now that you are teaching in group? Okay. Well, my master classes are different because they are for all ages. So it doesn't matter okay. if they're the young ones or the old ones. I mix them all together. I, I send out an email saying it's going to be master class week. I give a little sign up, uh, sign up genius link, and they can choose the day and time. So I don't try to divide them up into, um, you know, close age groups at all. I'll oh. have anywhere from a four year old to a 17 year old in the master class. So I do have to think about what I want to do that will engage all the learners. Um, but it, it's good because we almost always do, um, everybody prepares something to play. So it gives them a little more performance opportunity than recital, gives them a chance to get, the little kids get a chance to know the big kids. Mm-hmm. Um, the big kids get a chance to sort of mentor and yeah. assist, they'll, they'll be my helpers if we're working on something. Um, for instance, next week is uh, Easter Monday and we're going to have a master class and we um the main focus of our master class will be we're going to do a study of Rachmaninoff uh because we don't hear about him very often but um Joy Morin has some amazing lap books mm-hmm. and she's got one for Rachmaninoff so we're going to make a composer lap book um piano guys have a neat video of rock meets rock Monanoff. we're gonna listen to that we're gonna learn a little bit about his life listen to some of just his music but then listen to um kind of the piano guys uh, uh what they what they more do. modern take on it yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that is really um so you're saying that on the holiday you're still you're that's when you do the master class so they still come to the studio they do. So the, on the holiday Monday, I'll close the studio that week. 
and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll offer all these different time slots that they can sign up for. Oh, so, so you do regular lessons. Okay. They'll come okay. Yeah. And oh. that way the whole Monday students don't miss out. They're not going to come on their regular day, but they're still going to get a lesson that week. Very nice. Very nice. So, um, did you, I'm going back to when you just started, got started with group lessons. Um, when you started doing the, the group piano, um, not your early childhood, but your group piano, how did you do that? Did you start with a specific method or did you make it yourself? What did you do? That's a good question. So I thought what I would do is any new students, I hadn't changed over. I wasn't changing over my private students yet. Okay. But any new students, I thought, okay, we're going to, and I'll accommodate them as a group. And, um, and what I ended up doing, it was that when I started that, my daughter actually, um, she was uh, four turning five. She wanted piano. And I thought, oh, it'd be so fun for her to, to right. do this in a group. And, and so I thought, well, she'll, she'll, it'd be good to pilot out a, a class with her in it as well. So it happened to be at the same time that Nancy and Randall Faber were just coming out with or working on my first piano adventure. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't published yet, but they had asked for any teachers that would be interested in kind of beta testing it. Oh, wow. And so I was like, I'll beta test it. And, and Nancy had kind of released some videos and she was working with two students and she was doing some off the bench stuff and she was doing some on the bench stuff. And I saw those videos and I thought, well, if she can do this with two students, yeah. I think I could do this with three or four and we can, yeah, we can get off the bench and work on some drums and then we can go to the pianos together. And, and, um, and so, um, and, and I had a piano and I had two little keyboards. So I thought, well, we don't, we could even, I could use the keyboards and we could be either together at the piano or I can give them each, um, yeah. a, a spot to play two on my big piano two one on each keyboard. And, so that was what I started with, was working wow. through my first piano adventure. Do you um, still use my piano adventures for the little ones? You know, I don't. I enjoyed that, and we, we worked through that. Um, but then I ended up um, using a, a program specifically for group teaching called Music for Young Children. Um, oh, and it was a program I had my my own my music theory teacher. She had taught that program, mm -hmm. and um, and so um, because that program kind of um, would take them from very very beginner very um, beginner yes to um, finishing um, grade one Royal Conservatory um, by yes. the end of yeah. And so yeah, and, and so I thought I'll do that because it was specifically geared. I didn't have to. You didn't have to make it up. Yeah. So, um, so the, do the parents stay in that, in the um, class? They, so in the, in those classes, they are parented classes. Yes. And I remember, um, when I started with music garden, it was the same time that, um, music for young children. And I, I thought it was such a good program, but I had invested so much money in the other one. Yes. So I had to choose one, but I always thought it was really, really neat how they started so young just on the piano with the parents there. I just, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Are you still using that for your younger ones? I'm using that for my in-person um, classes, um, but it is like, it's harder to get them. The, the, like I order the books and materials, I pass them out here. And so it, I found, um, it, it worked really well online when we had to go online for COVID. Um, but starting like classes for people who lived like suddenly I had students who, you know, lived far away and wanted to do classes with me and getting the materials to them. Um, what wasn't like getting them shipped to them wasn't feasible um, because they couldn't order them online. You have to be a music for young teacher to right. order the materials. So, so for my online only classes, um, I've been using Wonder Keys. Oh, and, uh, okay. Oh, in a group? Yeah, in a group. Yeah. With the parents? Um, with those ones, the parents are often handy, um, but they're not 
quite a side by side. So, what age do, are you using Wonder Keys online? So, I'm using that for ages five to seven. Okay. Okay. So, they're not going to wiggle as much. <laughs> no, they are a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. That is, that is amazing, Michelle, because yeah, I have to journal a bit about my um, my feelings towards online uh, with the little one. Well, a lot of things online, but um, that is good to know. That is good to know that it's how many do you have in a group online? I'll have up to six. Wow. Yeah. And um, so they each have their book. How do you get them to play the songs? We take turns. So for that, okay. so we'll, part, part of the lesson will be um, they'll each play a song from last week's homework. And okay. um, so, yeah, so we do, there is a little bit of time where it is sitting and listening to each other. Sometimes I'll break it up with a little movement activity or something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah, it, it, we'll, we'll play together on mute, some sort of right. like normal right. stuff, but then I do want to hear them. And so for that, um, we'll unmute one at a time and each person will share. Yeah, I, I would love to watch one of your classes because um, Wonder Keys is, is fun for the kids. It's a lot of fun for the kids. My, um, my nieces who are now 13, of almost 14, when Wonder Keys first came out, like not this new version that's out, there was one before. Yeah. I used it with them and they still remember the songs and the little fingers and it's amazing. And now they play, you know, early intermediate level you know, making up their own song. So it, it was a fun beginning for them. Yeah. Like you can use, you can, I've got little puppets, you know, and or stuffies. So you can, yeah. it, it's easy to make it engaging online. And it is. A little story and there's yeah. so many games. And the games that, you know, many of the games I've been able to adapt to play with them kind of on the online, on the screen or yeah. kind of working together. So it, it's, it's worked well. That is amazing. I, I've uh, never heard of a teacher doing that online with a group. So, wow, I'm impressed. Tell me more about your online classes. You were telling me that you also do hybrid. Right. Which so I have hybrid. stopped because it's so much work. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Sure. It, it is a lot of work. So I, I started doing hybrid. So in fall of 2020, we, you know, we had come back to being allowed to do in-person teaching. Um, COVID restrictions were being lifted. Um, but then cases were going up and, and people were needing to, if they were exposed, isolate. And so I was finding that with my classes, a lot of people were emailing and saying, we can't come this week um, because we're sick or we've been exposed, we can't go. And so I, I kind of wanted to address the issue of, okay, so, um, you know, when it was all online, that was great. They could be there no matter what, sick or not. But now that it's in person, we have a little bit of a problem and I don't want them to have to miss. So I started offering if you can't come in, you can Zoom in. And so I should sometimes have one or two students on my computer and then the others would be here uh, in class and teaching to both of them. And it, it took me a little while to find my stride. Uh, the first few weeks I was really tired and it was, I knew how to teach only on screen and I knew how to teach only in person, but it is trying to figure out how do I keep these guys engaged and these yeah. Um, ones in. Yeah. And so it, it took, it took quite a few weeks. I was tired. I was like, this is, is no joke and some experimenting. And what I use is, um, so I use OBS. Okay. So, um, and that way I can have my screen, uh, I, I, my screen can look like this. My screen can be just my piano. My screen can be me and the piano. Um, and so that helps, uh, I think, keep the ones at home a little bit more engaged, especially if I have me on screen and the keys on screen. They can see what I'm doing, but it's not just some phantom right. hands playing. They see me too, and I can talk um, to yes. them as well. 
Yes. So. Do you have really good um, internet where you are? And I do. My when when COVID happened, uh, my husband did wi like I was using Wi Fi in my studio, but my husband did hardwire my studio so that I could plug directly in. Oh, so that makes a big difference. It does. It does. Because I only I've only used Wi Fi, um, and we live out in the country, and things are not as easy, and right. so. There were a lot of things that I could not do. And so when you have uh, students that at the last minute are like, oh, I'm online now, I'm gonna join. It's it's a whole procedure to get it to work. So maybe I need to upgrade so I can be more flexible because that is the biggest problem is the issues with the internet. Yes, absolutely. That, and it's the most stressful one too, yes. for sure. It's very stressful when that happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, Michelle, this has been so good. Thank you. You're doing so many good things. But I, um, bef before I forget, I want to tell everybody about your website. Because this morning I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to Michelle. We haven't talked in a long time time let me look at her website I was like this is what a piano teacher's website should be it's just nice and clean with exactly the information that a parent would want and then the videos the videos are just so good okay that little boy that's talking he's a little what that's one of my piano students. That's his voice. <laughs> oh, really? I was wondering. And I, I clicked on that just by mistake because I was trying to, you know, click something else. And I thought, that is clever. Then your intro video. Okay, I'm about to go copy you and change my <laughs> change my website. Um, and add more videos. I did have a parent tell me that she had a friend that looked at my website, but didn't find any videos that when she showed her videos of my social media with my kids playing, that's when she's like, oh, I would have chosen her if I would have seen videos. Nice. So kudos to you for having uh, different videos um, on your website. It's just, it's a delight. So I'm going to make sure I put it in the comments and when we share it on YouTube, um, tell us more about how you, what were you, what was your thinking process to get the website? Because we all hear the experts talk about what our website should have, but this doesn't look like you had an expert tell you what to do. It's like you told somebody, this is what I want. I did. Yeah, I did. I had before COVID hit, I had this WordPress website that I had made myself and, and played a, a long, around with, but I got to the end of my skills yes. <laughs> and, uh, but, and, but I had a vision. I knew what I wanted. And so I did, I found someone who, um, was a web designer for specifically for WordPress. Cause I thought that would just be the easiest sort of, um, transition. Just, yeah. And so, yeah. And so uh, like I told her, well, these are the kind of things I want. Like I, I love when I can go on to, and I had seen um, some other just websites of, I don't know, I think it was a gym or something like that. And they had some videos on there kind of giving a little sneak peek of what their classes like right. were like. And, and, um, and I thought, you know, like group fitness, you, you're you're not you want something if you're going to sign up for group fitness it's got to look fun you want to look like yeah i want to be a part of that i want to do that and i thought group piano it's it's no different than group fitness you want people to see it and say oh I, that's exactly what you know to envision um their child there and doing those things and um and so i thought um, that's a much better way than just using words to describe it. To use some videos and give them a little sneak peek into yeah. um, the piano studio. So, I love the cup video. Oh yes, that was our that was from COVID, and so that was for our big our big finish for the uh, um, the YouTube recital that we had to do. Wow. Um, so 
Um, cause we, at our, at our recitals, we always, always had like a big, uh, a big kind of rhythm number. And I thought, oh, how am I going to do that with COVID? And so, um, so my husband, we, he took all of the classes that I had done it with and then kind of put them together. Oh, okay. I was wondering, cause I saw you on there three times. Yeah, exactly. So there were, we did it, we filmed it, I think, yeah, in three, like I filmed it with three classes because I wanted to make sure everyone was missed. Yeah, everybody was there. And so, so yeah, we did do it, I think, uh, like three, we joined on Zoom three times to make sure we got that, it. That was really cool. That was really cool. Was really well, cool. Um, Michelle, this has been really good. Um. I want to know if there's anything else that you would like to share with the group piano teachers. Um, anything that you think that they need to know? Well, I, yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, I think um, it, it's it's just great to try some new things that maybe scare you a little. Um, so some of those things, like I said, have, um, have just, uh, um, grown me as a teacher. So even doing this hybrid has certainly grown me. Uh, it's definitely grown my communication skills um, yes. with my students and, and had me thinking more creativity, cre creatively right. about um, how to engage. Um, but it's also like blown up my studio. And so I, I now have about 50 um, students that are local. And then I have another um, 15 or 16 um, wow. that are from all over online. And so, and those are my, my online uh, groups. And so um, some, they're from different time zones, different places, but, uh, but yeah, it's. Do you find that you're teaching all the time because you're online also? I do find that I can have uh, like some some longer days uh, for sure. My Tuesday, I start teaching at eight thirty in the morning, oh. and uh, yeah. Um, but I am trying to finish by because I do have a lot of daytime hours now. I'm trying to finish by six forty five um, oh. at night as my last class. So so yeah, I am finding that um, I am once again. Um, getting to the capacity, I think, of the yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, so much value in this in this conversation. Um, I loved visiting with you and learning about your studio. And I know all the teachers that will watch this will will you know be encouraged that even if you didn't think you wanted to be a right. piano teacher. <laughs> I was just doing anything else. <laughs> yes, I I was the same. I didn't want to do education in in uh, undergraduate. I I did performance because I'm not dealing with little kids. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you again. And um, you know, uh, as the week goes on, I know there will be teachers watching. So just watch to see if they ask you any questions. But um. Will you go ahead and add your your website on there also oh, yeah. on the I'll comment? I'll definitely. So that it will be exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for having me, Darla. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>